I'm going to show you the seven ways to create your app for free. And if you're trying to figure out how to bring your idea to life and create an app, there's a free download to give you examples and step-by-step -step guide of what platform you should use to get started. So here are the seven different platforms we're going to talk about. Number one, Flutterflow. Two, BuildBox. Three, Canonic. Four, Node-RED. Five, Softer. Six, Toyuto. And seven, Retool. Now, as we go through these seven, keep in mind, depending on what you're trying to create, there might be a very specific platform that works better for your use case. So let's dive in on the key features of each of the seven. Number one, Flutterflow is a platform where you can build applications fast. Now, the main thing that I'll bring out with Flutterflow would be this is a really good choice if you're trying to create mobile applications, you're going to be submitting this to the App Store. This is the platform I would choose to get started. There are tons of different things you can be doing with different animations, push notifications, light and dark mode, chat, and the list goes on. The one thing I will note is this allows you to have a professional looking and feeling app if you're creating a mobile experience. Not only this, Flutterflow also allows you to now have a a web application too. So if you're looking for something that looks great on desktop, that is possible with Flutterflow as well. But what really stands out is you can create a native app that you can submit to the app store. And yeah, it's wonderful. Number two, we're looking at BuildBox. If you're trying to create a mobile game, this is a great, great platform to get started. I think it has one of the best onboarding experiences, just hands down. And if you're trying to create a 2D or a 3D game, BuildBox stands out. Uh, the other thing I would mention with this is now they have the new AI generator. So if you're trying to figure out how to use, um, create different assets, pictures, all those things, you can do that with BuildBox AI as well. And just amazing some of the games that are created. And if you go on their website, they're always talking about uh, different um, BuildBox games that have done really well in the, in the Apple store or the google play store all of those things so it's definitely something to check out next we're going to be looking at canonic i've been talking about canonic for years look at my channel this is such a sleeper of a platform it allows you to create internal tools i would say it's on the more of the low code side because you have to still understand a lot with how you structure a database but this is a wonderful platform to get started. Not only that, if you're into APIs or things like that, that's just how two systems talk to each other. It already builds out your API documentation as well when you build out your database. It's just amazing. I could go on and on. If you want to hear more about Canonic or you're building internal tools and you like low code, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, here's a sleeper hit as well. People don't talk about them a lot. They've been out for years. Um, <laughs> node red they don't get a lot of publicity it's just oh my goodness you can do so much with this if you're trying to use something like a raspberry pi or you're using um technology that's like physical hardware and you're looking to have different automation you're looking to do things with bluetooth all of those things node red is a great platform to use i believe this is open source as well don't quote me, but I'm almost 99.999%. So it's going to be free. The community is wild. I will just say um, Node Red is a community. Um, you're going to have to know some things about uh, automation or using um, understanding databases just because it's, it's low code programming, right? So it's not going to be as easy to use like Softer or Toyuto or Flutterflow, but this is a really powerful. Um, platform or you know a way to build applications the next one we would look at is softer now softer is a platform where you can build applications very fast the thing that stands out with softer for me is all the different templates and use cases that you can use with softer so if i'm thinking about creating a client portal um, applicant tracking inventory management investor portal uh, marketplaces, project trackers, you can be doing this. Now, it's using the power of Google Sheets or Airtable. So it's using a database and then it's making it look really good. So just imagine it's building a front end for you. It's making it look really, really nice. Uh, before going in here, I would say, write down what are you trying to create? What are What's your goal? Because 
being here, you can be overwhelmed or there's so many options. So having an idea of what kind of application you want to build, what kind of idea you're trying to build, then going into software, that's key. Next up would be to Uto. Now, if you're trying to create uh, an OTT platform uh, or you're trying to create a streaming platform, look no further than to Uto. Now, there's other platforms I've reviewed in the past. The reason I like to Uto is a couple different reasons. Number one, you can start for free. That's always great. But also what really sets this apart is you can have something called core by to Uto. So if you're looking to create a um, a streaming service and you want to use Flutterflow, you can be doing that with Tuto because you get access to their API, which just means that it's two systems talking to each other. So you can use Tuto, get started, but if you want to also uh, pair it with Flutterflow or other front end designs uh, platforms, you can be doing this. But out of the box, Tuto is going to be great for 99% of everyone. In fact, there's a whole series of this year I'm building out my, our own streaming service to show people, but also to have our own other side hustle and side business and a media platform using Tuto. If you want to know more about this or if you want more videos on Tuto, let me know in the comments section down below. Next, we look at Retool. Now, Retool allows you to create internal tools as well. Um, what I would really look at Retool is it's very, very powerful and you can just do a lot with Retool as well. So again, depending on what you're trying to build, but we have seen companies making six figures, high six figures, use this for their internal tools and use this for their workers. And they're just using Retool, um, App Scripts and Google Sheets, and they're building a robust uh, application for their business. If you want to hear more about it, let me know in the comment section down below. We might do use cases or talk to different founders, but Retool, it, it's I don't think it gets enough credit. And also, too, depending on what kind of business, you can ask for some of the credits to get started as well. Uh, so if you're trying to expand or go beyond uh, the free tier, you can also look at some of the plans and some of the credits that you can be going uh, to. Now, the next portion is uh, we're going to be talking about pricing. Now, once again, this video, I said for free, you can start with all of these things for free. But some people say, but doc, but this isn't free forever. Well, depending on what you're trying to create, some of these will be free if it's open source or things like that. But keep in mind, the options that you have, you can start for free once you start getting paying customers or start getting your audience paying, then switch over to the price tiers. So this is not a, a bait and switch. All of these have free tiers that we talked about, but depending on what you need, the functionality, some require uh, payment. Now, some might say, well, I thought this was totally free. Nothing's free. Nothing's free. Even if you're using a free service, quote unquote, free service like Gmail, Google Sheets, if you're using social media like Instagram, Facebook, all those things, there's a saying, which is if you're not paying for something, uh, you, you're the product, right? They're making money off of you from your data and all of these things. So when you're looking at these options, if you're trying to create a business, you're still going to have operating expenses. You're still going to do these things. But the the biggest problem that I see over and over again would be people try to build apps and think they're going to make money just on ad revenue instead of trying to build a, a full structured business with, with customers that are ready to pay right now and then go from there. I'm not saying that you can't run ads and use AdMob and others on certain platforms or certain applications you want to build. That still might be a nice revenue stream, but don't bank all of your money on those things. Find your customers, find with, uh, find people that are willing to pay. And that goes into all of the, the PDF that you can download where how to pick the right tool. And we detail from idea to application, how you can get started today. In the comment section down below, let me know what you're working on and we'll see you in the next video.